Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge my first slide. You were expecting something a little more remarkable? Truth be told, this invitation to present frightened me. Despite 20 years experience as a high school teacher, one who teaches writing and dabbles in public speaking on a daily basis, this presentation, the unknown audience, intimidates me. So it's important for you to know that I started somewhere on a page that looked much like this plain white rectangle. I'm a logophile. Logos derived from Greek meaning word and phil meaning love or lover. I am a lover of words. And so words to me are curious. Their usage moves beyond communication to reveal our values. Most recently, for example, I've noticed a problematic trend in language use that I'd like to point out. For one, I've noticed the increased use in the word curate to describe one's efforts, particularly on social media, to carefully and deliberately craft and present a perfect version of oneself, a final product that is visually appealing, yet seemingly effortless. Our interest in this word is undeniable. It's denotation moving far beyond the duties of a museum manager, selecting marble statues, organizing oil on canvas, and arranging dinosaur bones. Looking at the data on Google Trends, I can say that American interest in the word curate shifted significantly starting in 2009. It's no coincidence that our contemporary use of this word correlates with the proliferation of social media platforms. Long before Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, curate as a word, right, had its etymological roots in medieval Latin, derived from the verb to cure, and to take care of. The supposed prestige of a photoshopped ideal life, the current unhealthy obsession with appearing perfect is fast eclipsing Curate's former self, the one who humbly took care of and improved one's health. If our misguided use of this word doesn't underscore a portion of our country's mental health crisis, I expect the next word will. At the same time that Curate was digging its linguistic heels into the dirt of everyday vernacular, our love of slang produced another curious word. The word noob. Noob. Go ahead, smile. Miss Frey said noob. Say the word yourself. Go ahead. It's fun sounding, oddly euphonious. Assuming the youthfulness of my audience here today, I don't need to tell you that noob comes from technology as well, specifically the gaming world. At first, a novice or newbie, something novel or with novelty suggesting innovation, progress, originality, revitalization even, came fresh to the gamer scene with undeniable potential, like an apprentice who in due time would gain the necessary knowledge and skill to be successful masterful even. More recently, however, this word noob quickly acquired a negative connotation, linguistic baggage, so to speak. A noob is someone hopeless and undesirable because of their newness, rather than someone with possibility and freshness, despite their newness. Mom, my kids tell me when I'm laboring to keep up and among us, you're such a noob, or my son this summer, who quickly abandoned his first go at skateboarding because he was too much of a noob. Or more dangerous, my daughter, who brakes too hard or hesitates at a stop sign as she, a driving noob, takes to the open road for the first time. This usage of language, this exasperating tension between curating perfection and the noob accusation is a conflict of interest for humans, especially for young people. It's a false dichotomy of life. It's challenging these days, in other words, to enter into newness, a hobby, a class, a relationship, a job, a career, without debilitating self-consciousness. You're either a natural, an expert simultaneously curated and curating from the start, 
or you're a hopeless dead weight tail spinning with energy and purposelessness. Sadly, your resilience is challenged before you even approach the starting line. But in truth, everybody has to start somewhere. If my students are out there listening, you know I take pause at impersonal pronouns. The imprecise absoluteness of everybody is more often cringy to me. Cringy. Now that's slang I like. But in this exception, I deliberately mean to include everybody, every single body. Not one human in this room, in this Zoom call, in this world is exempt from being and feeling new. And if we want teenagers, future adults, to be best prepared, well taken care of for the future, curated in that medieval Latin sense, then we need them to accept that everybody has to start somewhere and adults need to do more to assist in and model this mindset. One of my favorite experiences with a supposed noob was when I was eight months pregnant with my twin sons. To be clear, I was eight months pregnant with twins. Never on bed rest, I cleared the aisles in stores, aghast fellow shoppers creating a path for my never before seen pregnant aesthetic. Indeed, I got tired of the same stale December joke. What's coming first, Santa Claus or that baby? I would go on to deliver my sons at nearly 39 weeks, each baby approximately seven and a half pounds. It's 15 pounds of baby at one time. But still, Despite the tourist attraction I had become when the obstetrician asked if I was okay with her new intern sitting in on my pre-delivery checkup, I agreed. And I'm glad I did because in walked a baby-faced teenager, a noob's noob, so to speak. Some child prodigy, he appeared 16, truthfully, on the fast track to delivery ba delivering babies and attending to other related issues in women's healthcare he didn't yet know existed. The intern's experience with me proved to be a unique opportunity to work on his bedside poker face, a missing chapter in the obstetrics textbook, I would assume. Clearly, he'd never seen nor expected any mother like me. First, his eyes bulged at the girth of my accommodating belly. And when my t-shirt jumped and dived and rolled as baby B conveniently repositioned himself, the intern was dumbstruck. He recoiled, his hands covering his mouth in disbelief. His lack of professionalism was louder than the awkward silence. I helped him out two weeks later at my C-section when, when I nodded, no problem, to the assisting midwife who left the room to help the new intern who passed out in room 443 delivering his first baby. I continued to welcome interns to join my doctors on visits. Unique, varied, and accumulating experiences for any noob are a non-negotiable priority over my privacy and my time. From the doctor's office to the classroom to the grocery store, this encouragement, this welcoming of newness and noobs follows me. This mentality travels to the classroom with me. How could I forget my first lesson as a pre-student teaching intern 23 years ago in room 227 of Edison High School. That's two doors down from my current classroom. The first lesson on the diction of twins, Huckleberry Finn, was dutiful. It was organized and interesting on paper, but my execution of that first lesson was stiff and awkward at best. But I needed that stilted starting point. I needed to slap the cold, hard clay slab on the table from there, I could begin to sculpt. Today, I love the opportunity to invite new teachers into my classroom. Just today, Middlesex student Mohammed Ahmed observed my afternoon ninth grade classes. He's enthusiastic, helpful, positive, open-minded. I adore his newness. And to be fair, I see myself as new at being older and wiser, new at mentoring. It's not often though that we busy Americans conditioned for instant gratification and glitzy aesthetics find such opportunity in first timers. 
online with a new grocery store cashier who needs to look up the code for an organic turnip or the aisle where the wheat germ is? Relax, give them a minute. You know a point in your life existed when you too question a vegetable shape, color, and texture. Behind a new driver going five miles per hour b below the speed limit on the local country road, no need to pass or flash your lights. Afford her some patience, please. I might be sitting next to her in the passenger seat for the first time myself. The cashier in training and the driver's permit deserve better. So here I am curating a new noob mentality, one that embraces the editorial nature of life. I'm urging us to cure the impatience and the perfectionism plaguing our lives right now. I'm taking care of a new mindset that celebrates the noob. I can see the t-shirts now. That mindset encourages humans teenagers and adults, novices and veterans, apprentices and masters to embrace the timeless, necessary and recursive human condition that everybody has to start somewhere. Here's my rectangle again. See, we can allow others and support others to start somewhere. So thank you.